Hello friends, welcome to next tutorial in ChatGPT RPS series. In last blog, we learned to take a screenshot of web pages. And in today's tutorial, we are going to write the code to read text from those screenshot images. Below in video description, you will find links to GitHub source code and YouTube playlist. So let's browse to our GitHub RPA repository. Now, if you're looking to other web scrapping code, you'll find links to a lot of different web scrapping examples here which perform variety of different tasks. In this video, we are going to focus on writing code to read text from images. We are going to make use of PyTesseract Python library to accomplish this task. So we'll do pip install PyTesseract. Oftentimes what happens, we require a snapshot of email, web page, online order receipt, or any other document which contains the images. So a typical use case is, for example, you receive a vendor paper invoice and you want to really see what's included in that voucher invoice. So in this kind of scenarios, what do you want to do? You want to read the text from the images. So in this tutorial, we are going to first create generic functions and then we are going to extend that functionality so that we can uh, read text from the multiple screenshots. In this notebook below, you will find original chat GPT generated code, which works just fine. If you query chat GPT, write code to read text from images, it's going to generate something like this. But we are going to write each line so that we can customize this code for our purpose. So let's start with a new notebook here. Now, before we start, I want to read a disclaimer that this library, although it's very, very powerful, but it's not perfect. And it may not accurately read all the text from all the images. But having said that, it still is a very powerful tool. So let's start with doing the installation, pip install Tesseract. Again, I already have this installed, so I'm not going to do it over again. Second thing, I'm going to install another module, say Pillow. Uh, it's optional, but this is very, you know, if you want to read, the, if you want to see the images within the Jupyter Notebook, you will need that. So let's go import OS and read the content of the current working directory here. So os.list directory downloads. So let me run this. As you will see, I have a couple of images and these are the images I generated in my last tutorial. Now, let me open one of this so that you can see what exactly inside that. So here, that's the reason I installed uh, Pillow. So from Pill, import image, and then I'm going to just give the part to that. So image dot open and give that part to our downloads. Uh, let's open one file called apple.png and now let's do image.show, img.show so that you can see how the image looks like. So this is the image, this is the screenshot, typical screenshot, and I want to read the content from this particular screenshot. All right, so let's go to our, go back to our notebook. Now here, we are going to write the PyTesseract code here. All right, so first thing we'll do, that we'll make sure that Tesseract, and you have to do the installation here. So first of all, uh, Tesseract is an executable, um, uh, executable code and you must have the uh, that installed so in my case like you know you um, typically what you do you have to install the Tesseract and you have to create an environment variable here and include that part to the Tesseract.exe uh, to your environment variable and in case if you are wondering where to download it from I have included that link to where you can download the Tesseract from all right so if you browse to that link and there is an uh, there's a link to that exe and depending on operating system mac os or linux you'll find appropriate link please make sure to download that and include this as your uh, environment variable all right now let's go uh, import pytesseract and image and here simply what needs to do first of all uh, you define an environment variable but just in case if you don't have the environment variable defined uh, you can use this command pytesseract dot tesseract underscore cmd and give the part to that tesseract.exe file now I'm going to define a function which takes an image. So let's uh, pass the image part to this function. I'm going to include some documentation here just for the reference. Next thing, what I am simply I'm going to do, I'm going to you know read that image path, and I'm going to use the pillow library image function here, and uh, I'm going to you know I'm going to read that image into a variable called image. So image dot open and pass that uh, file name here, and whatever it comes out. I will store that binary object into image. Now I'm going to make use of pytesseract function, say pytesseract dot image to a string. What this function does, it takes an image which is already in, in the binary format and it converts the content of that image into text. Very simple function. And all it does, it, it runs a text. So now let's go, once you see that in action, it will make more sense to you. So let's now let's go call this function. Uh, so read image.txt and uh, I'm going to, you know, pass that apple.png file what we were seeing earlier. Let's go take another look at it. So, and I'm going to, you know, call this function out and pass that, um, that file part to this particular function. And now let's go print the text. So let's run this again. 
So hopefully, as you can see, this uh, kind of like, you know, I, and I kind of verified it, it's like 99% of um, generated text is, is, is almost the same as what was, what was shown in the image. So for example, previous close price, previous high open price, and uh, current price, and I verified out most of the amounts here. Let me show it one more time here. And those amounts, so for example, take a look, the current price is $159, open price, open price, previous close price. Most of the amount directly matches with what, um, what is included in the screenshot. So this does a fairly pretty decent job. So um, I think, you know, I'll be making use of this library more and more. Uh, now let's go do one thing. I'm going to, you know, because I want to read the content of all other files. So there are four other PNG files included in this directory, Google, Microsoft, Oracle, Tesla. Now let's go create a loop very simply because we want to extend this functionality. Uh, typically what you will do, what you want to do, you want to read multiple files and you want to read the text and you know, push those inside a, a database. So let's go create a dictionary here, a dictionary of images. And it, it, all it does, it has like, you know, keys values and keys are the stock and the values are the, the image files what you have just uh, created in your last blog. So then all we need to do is simply do a for loop and which is going to read the content of this dictionary key dot value in item images dot items. And we are going to call this function what we just created one at a time. So that's how you loop it over and you can read multiple screenshot content. So finally, you know, in an RPA, typical RPA environment, what you want to do, you want to take this content and push it into a database. Um, so that's, you know, that's one typical automation task you can perform using this simple code. So I hope this uh, you find this code very useful. If you have any questions, any concern, please open a defect or um, in an issue log at the GitHub repository and I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you very much.